Do physical miracles really take place at Christian faith healing services? Or are people just believing what they want to believe? And if God exists, to what extent is he intervening? In 1995, I attended a Catholic healing service run by Father Ralph DiOrio. took place in a function room at a hotel. The place was packed, about 1,200 people, and I audio recorded what went on. Diorio wants a man named Henry to identify himself. Would you identify yourselves, please? Would that gentleman, H. E. Henry, is a man named Henry here with a back problem? Would he identify himself, please? I know you got to be here because God gave us that word of knowledge. But Henry never identified himself, and eventually somebody stood up and told Diorio that Henry had left earlier. So much for Diorio's implication that he gets his information directly from God. Diorio apparently heals a woman of neck pain. Intermittent neck pain, I might add. I'd like to see one of these faith healers cure something less ambiguous, like curing an amputee. That never happens. Diorio attempts to heal people's hearing problems. With all of them, anyone who has auditory problems, would you stand up please if you want prayer for healing? Ready? If you have any hearing aids in your ears, please remove them, take them out. I'm going to do a prayer of deliverance. I'm going to cast out the spirit of deafness from you. We come against the deafness and sickness that's affecting these people. I pray, Lord Jesus, you give the prayer of command. I command that this deafness in all its forms come out. You follow the infirmities of deafness in all your forms. I command you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, unstop you, come out and never return. Amen. Praise Jesus. Stay standing. How many people's ears open right up and you can hear me now? It's yes or no. Believe or no. Of the 30 or so who stood up, only two raised their hands about halfway up. So this went over like a lead balloon. But Diario does not acknowledge that fact and just prattles on. Enjoy the evening. I want to pray for cancer. I'm not going to do what I just did. Lord Jesus, I come against cancer. I come against leukemia. I command the name of Jesus, come out! Diorio pressures people to claim healings. Will, will you heal here? Will this, uh, it has to be yes or no. Yeah. Have a microphone here, please. Yes, yes I could heal. With prayer and praise. But you see, I still can't. What did I say to you at the beginning of the service? Prayer and praise. Mm -hmm. Prayer and praise. A guy asks for a healing for his wife, but Diorio weasels out of it by only vaguely implying a healing will take place sometime soon. Sir, my name is Dick. Um, my hair did change to improve. Uh, I put my day elevated. I want to be able to myself and for my wife. Yeah. Diorio knows he can't get away with claiming a cure for Alzheimer's for this man's wife, so his only response was, we'll be anointing in a few seconds, okay? And he quickly moves on to the next person. Eventually, of course, it falls back onto the poor guy, who will blame himself for not having strong enough faith as his wife is not cured. Some may view this whole proceeding as a wonderful bolstering of faith and hope. I do not. 
People are ignoring the downside, the profound emotional devastation for people who are clearly not healed. Next, Diorio equates making a baby cry to healing her deafness. She's deaf, she has um, neurological problems, and she's severely delayed. I'm not sure if you can hear me. We command you, Jesus. Come on. Never eat your hands. Maybe take it off the top. She doesn't cry. I don't like that. Praise the Lord. good view and that baby did not hear anything and only later on started crying because by that time she had been annoyed enough by Diorio. I ordered a videotape of the service and I wondered why are they selling videotapes of the proceedings when tickets to this event warn that tape recording of any kind would disturb the service. Quote right on the ticket. Important notice. Due to the sensitivity of the services and the intense concentration of prayer, tape recording of any sort is absolutely prohibited. Why wouldn't they want miracles recorded? Why wouldn't they want miracles recorded? It can only be because they don't want any disconfirming material to get out. Later on I talked to the parents of that baby who was supposedly cured of her deafness. Was she healed or not? And well, you don't know her. She never really tested it. She seems to be crying like she did up there. Uh, seems to be scared. I want to clap his hands. So. Uh. Towards the end of the service, people got into a long, long line to get a little sign of the cross with a little oil put on your forehead by Father Diorio as you pray for your healing. I joined the line, asked for a healing for my mother who had Parkinson's. She was not healed. She died a few years later in 1998. I talked to various people, none of whom claimed a clear miracle. I talked to a guy in a wheelchair, clearly in rough shape with cancer. There was no healing. I noticed one lady in a wheelchair who, after the healings, was still in a wheelchair. She had never gotten out of it. I approached her and gently questioned her. She has MS, and her response included these comments. Some are healed right now, some are healed over time. Everybody's healed in different ways. Some are healed emotionally, if not physically. So that gave me some idea of how people who are obviously not healed physically, nevertheless interpret their situation in a positive way. On my way out, I talked to another lady, a strong believer. My, guy, I, my, my mother has Parkinson's, and I don't expect her to get better at all. And I know she's yeah, going to get better. See, for it. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't say, I don't expect her to get better at all. What you're doing is blocking the grace. I don't think so. <laughs> I, think the, I think the opposite. I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm accepting Bye. the world as God created it. Amen. You yeah. accept it as it is, but what I'm yeah. saying, don't say she's not going to, because that's really not up to you. It's up to God. Right, and God has created Parkinson's disease to be... And he also it isn't heals the, those when he wants to, too. I don't think he does. <laughs> we oh, might yeah. want in a million, but yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I, nothing I saw tonight really impressed me. I'm telling you, there, there are 12 people with wheelchairs in front of me. They were still in wheelchairs when they left. Mm -hmm. All these people coming out with various things. They, you know, Nobody got better as far as I saw. Uh, From a serious well, accident? I'm going to tell you something about people uh, that are non-believers. Yeah. They scoff and they do all sorts of things to uh, say, well, maybe we misdiagnosed this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we did this and that. Maybe we mm -hmm. ought to take some more x-rays. No, we can't release you. I said, what's the matter with you? Jesus just did this. How can you possibly stand there and shun what God has done? God forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
I know I'm doing. peace be upon you, and God bless mm -hmm. you. And Mark, right. look it up. Mark look what? it up. <laughs> Mark, read Mark, Luke, and John. I already have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Press for you. All right. Thanks. I appreciate your intentions. I disagree with your religion, though. I saw the presence of much hope for healing. I saw the absence of any actual healing. I was struck by how unsure people were of this afternoon's healings compared to their certainty of miracles they experienced or witnessed many years ago, over which time I think their minds have subjectively altered their perception of what actually happened to what they like to remember happened. I noticed how Diorio often starts with making a specific claim hoping for a hit from a large audience of 1,200 people. If he gets no response, he repeats the claim in progressively more general terms until he gets a response. And even if that fails, he moves quickly to another subject without missing a beat, without acknowledging failure, knowing his audience generally won't notice or mind, since they are not looking for failures, they are looking for successes. Faith healers are adept at focusing on the positive and minimizing the negative. Diverting attention is a key tactic. If someone on the left is not responding positively to a healing, suddenly the healer claims a woman on the right is contemplating suicide. Somebody on the right, of course, stands up, the audience gasps, and now all the attention is on her instead of the person who is not responding positively. With Diorio, I noticed this ploy of diverting attention several times. Also, when Diorio gets an ambiguous response, he bullies the person into making a positive claim of healing by saying it's either yes or no. At that point, the person is feeling the pressure of letting people down, of spoiling the play. So they invariably say yes. What I saw was theater, not miracles. A healing service functions as an elaborate drama in which the audience members are willing actors maintaining the pretense of the play. They are participants in a ritual that tries to make magic work. The bottom line is that faith healing is a conspiracy of self-deception. It's what I call promiscuous spirituality. Readily believing things because it's exciting, not because it's true. And I'm offended by it. It's dishonest. And it's dangerous. It easily leads people to neglect sound medical care with tragic real-life consequences. Not to mention how often the false hope fed to people with serious illnesses can end in heart-rending disillusionment and self-recrimination for lacking the supposed proper faith to make it work. I have no respect for Father Diario. He's a con man. Personally, I do not believe in breach of nature miracles, but I do believe that life itself, intelligence itself, consciousness itself, are miraculous and do point to a great intelligence behind the world, an intelligence far more credible than the cartoon version of God presented at faith healing services. Let me show you what, to me, is documentation of a miracle. I took a spill playing tennis this summer and scraped my knee. It healed. I find that process miraculous. Science can tell us how it healed step by step, but not why it should heal, why the whole process works. To me, a wound healing is some evidence for God, an ultimate power behind all the laws of nature. You can check out my website, Confronting Believers, for more material on what I think is wrong with traditional religion versus 
a more credible concept of God, something I call soft theism.